We spoke last at the uh, the digital uh, new fronts, mm. and we had a great conversation. T give us a little update on uh, the sort of the evolution or the growth of Condé as a video publisher, yeah, and so distributor. It, yeah, it, you know, it, it starts with Condé Nast Entertainment, which you know, led by Don Ostroff, absolute world class producer who comes out of uh, network television, and you know, the team that Don has assembled is absolutely the highest quality team of, you know, and, and Don being one of really the most connected people on both coasts, both in Hollywood and here in New York. You know, so it's the ability to attract great talent, and that's not only on-screen talent, but behind-camera talent in terms of writers and producers and directors, and that runs the gamut. So um, everything from short-form video on a brand-by-brand -brand basis, if you, uh, you take 73 questions, which runs on Vogue right now, we've had a lot of success with that, and if you haven't seen it yet, I'd encourage you to check out Cindy Crawford's 73 Questions on Vogue, really funny. Um, and we're doing that on a brand-by-brand -brand basis, so we've got these series of short-form videos, but that's also morphed on the, on the film and television side, and, and coming up this fall, you'll see the, um, the premiere of Only the Brave. It's a full-length full feature film that Don's team produced, um, but it came out of a GQ story and it's about the firefighters in Arizona uh, a number of years ago, many of whom perished in a massive wildfire, but a really compelling story. But, you know, I think when you, when you think about the spectrum on which CNE's, Condé Nast Entertainment, operates, everything from short-form digital video all the way up to, you know, potentially award-winning feature films, um, it runs a gamut. On Netflix is another good example is the um, series Last Chance You which follows a football team down in uh, down south and it's really compelling storytelling and very high quality uh, unscripted video that is uh, unscripted film that's been shot so uh, you know some good examples of what we're doing to evolve our overall video strategy so tell us about the revenue side the opportunities for advertisers and about the business around video yeah so the business so you know first and foremost from an advertiser standpoint it's the ability to go out and again I'll, I'll come back to it brand safety you know high quality trusted content um, and that is not only on our owned and operated sites but also a really high tier of premium syndicated partners. And that's everyone from AOL, Yahoo, MSN, to NBC Universal. You may know that we've got a partnership with Vox and NBC that we've done some really unique, uh, interesting things around data and you know, distribution platforms. But you know, we've assembled this great network of both owned and operated sites as well as syndication partners that allow us to take this great quality video storytelling and attach a brand message to it and go out and find the audiences that the brands are looking for. So is it more brand associated rather than selling pre-roll or both? both? So or? You, know, I, I, you know, our business is split about 50-50 in terms of you know, a, a straight up um, CPM based audience buy versus a uh, what would be more of a branded content buy or a cost per view buy where we're actually creating content on behalf of brands and then going out and ensuring a certain level of distribution and traffic. Cool. And um, what's next for you guys? Well, big, big fashion week. Uh, yeah, coming we got. Up. Yeah, sure. You know, we're entering that time of the year where we're about to kick off just in a, another week and a half or so, where Fashion Week New York kicks off, and that rolls right over to London, then to Paris, and then to Milan. So we've got a really busy three plus weeks ahead of us with. Uh, with Fall Fashion Week, which is actually uh, spring summer of next year, so and the uh, fashion advertisers, how has that changed? They're not, what are they looking for? Yeah, it's interesting to watch the evolution in a very short amount of time, and I, you know, I'd really consider some of the fashion advertisers and brands to be, you know, kind of, um, uh, you know, very heritage based. If you think about, you know, who these advertisers are, whether it be a, a Prada or a Gucci or a Chanel or a Cartier, you know, these are long-standing heritage brands and you know they've they've been very cautious about how to move into this new digital world but really even over the last year since my arrival I, I've seen and been able to watch this evolution where you know the first meeting you have it's still very much a print centric with a oh, we'll dabble a little bit in video and we'll dabble a little bit in in digital and then the next meeting I have less than six months later you know it's a programmatic discussion which is you know it just goes to show how Really, every industry has kind of looked at this new digital world in which we live and looking for ways to capitalize on it. So um, it's been great to watch and, you know, it's been great for us because as our portfolio of products expands, 
it allows us to be a better partner with not only the fashion and luxury advertisers, with everybody. So it's been great.